Uh, in these three examples, we're going to do some antiderivatives, some integrals of a little bit more challenging types of problems. Um, it helps to kind of manipulate things a little bit to kind of recognize what it is that we got going on. So um, on this one, I'm going to rewrite this as uh, that two. I'm going to pull in front of the whole thing, which leaves this with a one over x. I don't like the dx on a fraction, so I'm going to pull it off. Okay, so I can pull the two off, any kind of a constant I can pull off, and then that would leave a one on the top, and it'd be one over x, and then I just pull that off. So here's what I got going on. This one over x looks familiar to me, and it is when you have originally a natural log and you do the derivative of it, you get a one over x. So we're going backwards. So then when we were to do the antiderivative of this, two would still be there. It's not even part of the the integral anymore, we would be doing the antiderivative of this, which would become a natural log of x. And we will add in here that we need an absolute value out of that because you can't log a negative, but our original fraction had no problem having it. So it's not going to have any constraint on the original problem, except for zero. Um, but when you do this, we still have that constraint of zero. Um, would would kind of apply here, but you also can't have any negatives on there. So we're going to add the absolute value bars to take that, take care of that. And then we'll add our plus some sort of a constant. So if we were to do the derivative of that, we would get right back to that piece. So if we do the antiderivative of this, same kind of thing. I have a one third that I can take out of this and just have an e to the x dx. And so if I remember that if I have a derivative of e to the x, it is just itself. So then if we're going backwards, doing the antiderivative, we would just get the original all back again. And then plus c. All right, and now this one definitely looks messy. So um, let's rewrite this here a little bit that I'm going to treat these as two separate pieces first off. So I'm going to have the integral of this, and I can pull a four-thirds off of it. And that would leave it as a 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, And then since I do that, I'm going to put treat them totally independent. So I'm going to put its own dx here, minus, and then this is a 3 over x, which means I can take the 3 out of it, and then I have a 1 over x dx. Okay, so I pulled the 4 thirds off of this fraction. That's left it as a 1 and a 1 on the bottom. Okay, and this is going to be a recognition thing. I don't know off the top of my head what that is, but I'm going to use an integral chart to kind of help that cause. This 1 over x has that feel to it. So I know I got a natural log happening on that one. So let me kind of take a look at my um, list of integrals. And I have a one over the square root of a one minus x squared, which is this one right here, right? So that a squared, we don't have anything special on it. That's just a one. And so when we do our antiderivative, it won't be anything special either. So it's just gonna be an inverse sine x. All right, so that's going to be four thirds um, inverse sine of x. And then our natural log here, so minus three natural log, absolute value again, and then plus some potential constant. All right, so that was doing the antiderivative of a couple of different problems involving some natural logs, some exponentials, some trig functions that kind of typically those are just going to be on some sort of a list. It's not, hopefully it's not something you have to memorize. Um, and that's what our antiderivatives are.